this thing, man. So welcome to another episode of the Part of the Culture podcast. I have my buddy Brandon Clark here. He owns a company. What's the name of your company? All Heroes Don't Wear Case, man. I'm, I'm extremely excited to be part of the culture. Yeah, today, thank man. you. Thank you. You're now part of the culture. <laughs> so Brandon wanted to talk about um, the transition. And go ahead, kind of, what was the subject matter you wanted to discuss? Uh, well, really today, man, uh, I feel like what what the world needs, the world needs, especially like even in our community, um, is awareness. Okay. And how to get from point A in life to get to point B. Because uh, I, I think that everybody, everybody who's ever been successful, they all have a story yeah. behind it. And so I kind of want to share maybe bits of, not my whole story, you know, bits yeah. and pieces of my story uh, so that maybe, you know, I could help one person. I like that. You know? Same. I'm always, you know, my whole mission is just to try to help people succeed and, you know, tell people what helped me succeed and yeah. how I'm able to have a podcast and just be an entrepreneur and create income. And so... Uh, Go ahead, get it, get it started. Okay. Um, well, let's say I guess I could start with my background. Okay. You know, um, I'm from South Carolina originally. Super small town. Don't come from really any type of any type of wealth at all. Yeah. Uh, my dreams of of uh, really making it in life was playing professional football. I mean, what what a young African American doesn't have aspirations of being like a professional athlete or an entertainer. Yeah. You know. Cause I know that's where the money's just, at. Yes, that's where the money's at, man. Yeah. Like you know, I'd be that's lying. What they tell us. Yeah, right, exactly. And I'd be lying to you um, if I said that uh, I just wanted um, to just barely, barely make it. Like just have enough to to uh, to live a okay life, a good life. Like I remember being three, four, five years old and knowing, like, man, I want to be famous one day. Oh wow! I'm not saying that I want to be famous, yeah. but I, in my mind, famous then meant having having enough money. To be able to do everything that I wanted to do. That's what's up. Without limitations. That's and that's what's up. always been a, a a dream of mine. And I thought football was gonna be like that vehicle that okay. took that took me there. Wow. You know what I mean? How, how about how for, how about for you, man? Like, um, you know, when you were coming up, man, what did you want to what did you want to do? What did you want to be? When I was younger, I was honestly I it's funny, like like some people are like, I wanted to play football. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> what I wanted to do. I never had that itch for anything. I was just like messing around. I always like being a class clown. Uh -huh. um, but when I was 16, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, shoot. And that was the first time I, and from that book, he talks about a lot of stuff, but it made me want a business because he talked, to, he blew my mind in the sense that, cause I was working a job and before that book, I just thought like, I have to work a job. I'm gonna have to go to school. I'm gonna have to get a job and that's gonna be my life. I'm gonna right. get a wife and you have some kids yes, and yes, yeah. that's it and <laughs> i read rich dad poor dad and i was like yo i want a business okay and so i searched for two years and then eventually at 18 i was able to uh my friend uh had a little flea market business uh -huh. and he taught me wholesale retail uh -huh. and uh i went to the flea market and i made a buck and i was hooked ever since okay man that's what's up man i wish i had experience like that bro because yeah. like even you saying that i never ever saw myself in business neither did i want a business yeah because i never saw myself as like uh you know a salesman yeah or or whatever i didn't i wanted to stay far away from sales because i just felt like it's uncomfortable yeah you know like to sell stuff or talk to people but knowing what i know now i realize like everything is sales every single every thing every single thing you if you don't like sales then you just you don't like communication you don't i feel like the the, the better you can sell in your life the better success you'll have in all areas not just financially but uh, spiritually, uh, even in your family, um, just even with strangers. You know, I agree. You know, and uh, yeah, everything is, it's like he says, everything is sales. So when you, it's sell or be sold. If someone uh, calls you, like, oh, do you want this? They're trying to sell you, but you're also trying to sell them on the idea that you don't want it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything is yeah, sales. If you yeah. have that girl that you like, uh, you're trying to sell her. You're so. trying to present yourself in a way that she finds attractive, right? So that you can move forward in the relationship, and you know whatever mm -hmm. your goal is, whether it's to hit or start a family, yes, or whatever. Uh, it is. You know, but yeah. you have to you have to be able to make make sales in that. So you kind of you kind of touched on what was the what was the transition for you? What how did you go from you know the NFL mindset to the entrepreneur mindset? All right. You know what's funny is if I would have had the entrepreneur mindset when I was playing college football, I would have been in the NFL. Wow. That's powerful. How do you say that? 
because it's the way it's, it's the thought process behind it being an entrepreneur like you literally have to uh, grow build your faith because you got to really believe in stuff that you cannot see yeah at all you got to believe in yourself so much and, and so hard that it don't really matter what's going on like you just know you're gonna make it and i didn't have that mentality when i was playing football i was always comparing myself to to the next person yeah you know what i mean and whenever you start like comparing yourself to the next person that's like a competitive type of a mind frame to where you're not really focusing on you and what you can do better you're just trying to be better than the next person yeah you know what i mean and that was the mentality then. and so like sometimes you can you can really be more athletic than somebody but not really realize it because you're comparing yourself to them and you think that they're more athletic or better than you yeah without really realizing that yourself you know what i mean and once you begin to doubt yourself then that'll show up in other areas of your life wow you feel me and so that's true i didn't and so my mentality back then was like i'm comparing myself to people who are already in it in, in the nfl yeah like man i should be doing this i should be doing that doing that not realizing like everybody start from somewhere yeah you know what i mean and um kind of like what ended up happening was like after i i got out of college i basically um thought about you know being a police officer okay and i kind of got away from the football because i just was like well man maybe football ain't for me because i might not be good enough yeah but like looking back now, i'm like damn you know i was good enough for sure you feel me yeah. and and um and that's that's something that always stuck with me but now i just look at it like man you know that's a that's a learning experience yeah right and so to get back to entrepreneur and starting my own business from about 22 through about 29 that's seven years you know i was kind of just going through the motions you know how you know how we do yeah you know your 20s is is for some people their 20s is a blur turn up. <laughs> we yeah. turn it up yeah like tuesday thursday friday saturday I was sunday same. i was the same just 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 living it up man and then uh i was like 29 30 and i was like literally at work one day and i was working for at&t at the time and i was like what the hell am i doing with my life like literally i was just at work and i'm like i did not imagine my life I did not imagine doing this with my life. How the hell did I get here? Yeah. And that was it. And from that point, I just kind of just started. It was constantly on my mind. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it just seemed like once I opened my mind up to like, what am I doing here? How do I get out of it? Just all this information just started coming at me and coming at me. And then one day, uh, I ended up meeting a guy who was in life insurance sales. He's a life insurance agent. Okay. Young black dude, same age, driving a nice brand new tesla and i'm like man what do you do do for work he told me what he did and i'm like all right well i don't like sales but i don't like what i'm doing right now anyway i might as well try to learn how to do something that could actually put me in a better financial position for sure for the for the long run so i i opened myself up to that uh and then what i did was uh i ended up getting licensed worked with him for a minute but that was the i'm gonna say what the spark that, okay. that really changed everything because what I realized was to become an entrepreneur or uh, be good in anything, you really got to work on yourself first. Yeah. Like you got to develop as a person. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. So, you know, you, I'll let you keep going, but uh -huh. you said some, just to touch on some principles. Uh -huh. A lot of people sleep on this principle and it's one of my major successful principles. If you see somebody successful, take them to lunch <laughs> yep and ask them how they did it yep. and because you don't know in that conversation they could give you one tidbit that could literally change your life right you know you we talk about real estate the guy who did my real estate deal three years ago i used to bring him subway sandwiches and togo sandwiches and sit in his office yeah. and pick his brain wow you know what that's, i mean and 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 that's what i do so uh fast forward so you, you know now you're your you have your license life so now, insurance yeah, so agent now i get my license life insurance agent you're working on yourself working out now to, like so let, let me let me let me break the uh the norm here or the, or the uh the stereotype of life insurance because there are different types of life insurance there's different types of life insurance agents some people sell life insurance for death benefit protection some people have life insurance or use it for wealth accumulation and, and tax-free strategies right yeah. now when i first got into life insurance sales i was on the the i like to call it like a car insurance yeah because that that's really what more is like in case something happens then it's there yeah you know so that's where i started out at and um what what, what happened in that process and that's that's the grind 
Yeah. Like that is the straight up grind hustle. Like you gotta go knock on doors. You gotta like cold call. You gotta get rejected over and over. It was it was rough. Yeah, it's also a good experience though. Because you rough. realize that you uh -huh. at the end of the day you're still alive. Uh -huh. Sometimes still alive. you think sales will kill you, but it's what? Man, did you know our brain cannot tell the difference between an emotional emotional pain and physical pain? Our our brain recognizes that as the same thing. Pain is pain. Pain is pain. I didn't know that. Yeah, so um, this is where I learned about rejection. Okay. Because a lot of people let rejection stop them from doing everything. Like, yeah. Especially like when it comes to making money or starting business, it's the rejection that most people fear. Okay. Right. And I learned I had a rejection complex when I got in sales and I was getting rejected over and over where I didn't even want to pick up the phone to call people that asked for life insurance. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? And to, to give it to them. You yeah. know what I mean? They like like waiting on a call because you know they got a lot of people had that I don't want to be sold or yeah. you know the life insurance salesman has like this uh, uh, stigma. Stigma. Isn't it like negative stigma to it? Or it can. Yeah. And so I just, all these um, just thoughts were just going through my head and I had to battle through it and the way that I battled through it was I went on YouTube this wow. is gonna be on YouTube yes <laughs> All right, this, cool. this will be on YouTube <laughs> it's gonna be on YouTube man so uh, good thing is I got a sports background another good thing is I'm competitive and another thing is luckily I've always been told like I was smart, I was intelligent. Like okay. that's that's a blessing because everybody's not always told that growing up. Yeah, they're not. You know, they don't have like their mom or parents like telling like you know you're smart, you can do anything. You know, and I was lucky enough to have that. And then one day I was like, man, you know what? Um, I know I don't like sales, but this is a chance, an opportunity that I have to like really uh, make money, uh, do something I can be proud of, and like set myself up for the rest of my life and my family. For sure. And so I literally was like, okay, well, let me figure out how to be better in sales because sales is just communication. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, I know that whatever whatever I got and whatever I'm offer, I wouldn't offer it to nobody unless I was, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I wouldn't offer somebody something that's sales is them. Sales is service. It's service. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And you're just saying to a person, uh -huh. hey, like I can provide this service, provide service in exchange for, you know, monetary right. thing but it's you know sales is you're really serving somebody serving somebody good sales people don't really sell anything you're yeah just showing them like hey i can <laughs> yeah i got this for you yep. do you want it do you want it um uh -huh. so yeah i agree yeah and then working on and so that's what uh led me into uh communication yeah um a big part about communication is learning about about yourself so i had to you know learn about myself i got into personal development heavy yeah i'm talking about I cut off all the music and I literally for like a whole year I wasn't listening to nothing but like Les Brown, yeah, Jim Rohn, ben. Eric Thomas, uh, Napoleon Hill, a lot of the, 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 the greats, Zig Ziglar, yeah. and to learn about how to be a good salesman. Yeah. And ironically enough, all those men said sales ain't about sales at all. It ain't nothing about sales. It's about uh, developing your yourself, your personal development, becoming a better person. Yep. You know, learning how to listen to people, learn how to empathize and connect. Because yep. the sales is connection, building trust and rapport. Yep. You know, and uh, that that literally it just it started. Not necessarily saying I ain't had those qualities there before, but it helped me consciously use those. That's yeah. Consciously. It's always in us. Yeah, it's we've in had us. it. We have even yeah. everything like when. No matter what happens for the rest of our life, like even if we become great, like yeah. it's not like it's just gonna magically right. appear yeah. like some Thor hammer. Uh -huh. It's already in us. We're just unlocking it, unlocking you it. know. And by yeah. through faith and through action is uh -huh. how you unlock these things. Yeah. So that's personal development, man. Got heavy into it, and uh, one of the, the this is the thought that changed everything. The thought was, what you think about, you become. Yeah. I heard that quote, and I'm like, wait a minute. I, like what, whatever you think, whatever a man thinks, he'll become that thing that he thinks. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, that makes sense. It makes perfect. It sense. makes it makes perfect sense. And so I started doing. I remember like it was yesterday, four years ago. I was in my bathroom, and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm responsible for where I'm at in my life right now. Like every decision that I ever made in my life has led me to this point. Yeah. So if I want to get somewhere else, all it means I gotta do is just make different decisions. So I gotta think differently. Yeah. And then that's. Like a, a, a switch went off. It was, it was very liberating. 
This is game. It's very liberating, bro. It is liberating. <laughs> it is very liberating. liberating. Like, everything changed, bro. Um, uh, I went through this. I'm still going through I ain't going to say I went through it because yeah. I feel like this is a, a process where you continuously got to move forward because if you're not moving forward, you're going to go backwards. For sure. There ain't no, like, in the middle. I agree. Or stand still. It's either you're progressing or you're digressing. And um, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought right there. You're just talking about, you talking about, and I, I, so for me, very similar. Uh -huh. um, you talked about communication. Uh -huh. So you see, like we, you obviously as a viewer, you're watching this because we have cameras set up. Yeah. One of the reasons why I make all these videos mm -hmm. was so I can become better at communicating. Okay. So it was never, in the beginning, it was never about how many views or how many likes. It was literally mm -hmm. to create content and watch how I talk watch yeah. oh i say like all the time or yeah. i say this or i yeah. do this so it was, part of it was communication the number one skill in the world is communication is. if you could um i was watching uh django oh, and yeah. if you remember in the movie obviously it's a fictional movie uh -huh. but django gets he gets sold back into say he was a free person he gets sold back into slavery uh -huh. he communicates his way out of that situation yeah you know what uh -huh. i mean back into freedom <laughs> he winds up killing cats and yeah. doing what django does if you yeah. haven't seen the movie but it was communication. communication. So I I studied communication. I studied marketing. I studied branding. My changing point. I talked a little bit about it. My first changing point was um, was when I read the business book. But okay. then fast forward. I was thirty. I'm thirty four now. I'll be thirty five in a few months, two months. But when I was thirty two, I had another big big uh, changing point. Um, I'll rewind a little bit. I listened to the Zig Ziglar's. I listened to the Les Browns, I listen to, and those guys catapulted my business and they put me in a position yeah. to even get to this point, have my own shop and everything, but I yeah. wasn't getting ahead. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was kind of just maintaining. My bills were always paid, yeah. but I, I, I had my, I didn't work, uh, I might have bartended a night or two a week, but I, I was uh, damn near living like I had a job, just just over broke. I remember yeah. waking up at 32 and crying, literally tears coming down my eyes crying yeah. because I was living in a studio and I was like, man, even if I wanted to have my grandma here, I couldn't have my grandma here. Like wow, it was just yeah, like yeah. a bad situation. It was, you know what I mean? I just didn't like where I was at 32. Probably some of the was, same type yeah. of emotions that you had at yeah. 29. Mm -hmm. And I prayed. I prayed to God, and He kind of just said, you know, what and it was very basic. He was just like, um, start tithing, start giving. Yeah. You know what I mean? You and and I was like, all I've done. I went through a bad breakup at the time. Um, and all I was in my life, I was such a taker. Like, what's in it for me? What's, what's in it? And I didn't realize I was like that. Yeah. In all honesty. Oh man, give me some. But, right here. But hey, I, that was, I that's that's yeah. how I felt. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Uh huh. Right. Go so, ahead. That is, once you learn that part. Yeah. That it ain't about you. It's about everybody else. Oh man, that shit changed everything. It's, especially like in communication. I think it's the game. I it's, think it's, it's how you get ahead. It's how you get ahead. Cause most people. I don't want to say most people, but I, most I people, ninety-nine percent of people, ninety. I always think of what's in it for them. Yes, always. And so, even in communication, even if it ain't like sales or any way to make money, if you can can wrap your head around what's in it for that person, and you can give it to them, then you can get anybody to do anything that you want them to do. Yeah, like like straight up. And like when you said giving, like giving that tithe. Yeah, bro. I have this philosophy about money. Um, it's not really a philosophy about money, but because I want to, I want to be rich. Yeah. And I want, I always wanted to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. Yeah. I decided to study money. Yeah. And what I found out, like about money, is like really, money ain't really, ain't no, is money's not paper. Like what it's you nothing. think is money, like it's a thought. This cam, that camera is money. Yeah. Money is a thought. It's an idea. You know what I mean? Money is what, what we call money, like paper dollars is just a way that we can exchange something on a physical level yeah. that we can agree on. Bartering, like, that's what started money. It's yeah. literally bartering. Yeah. bartering. So yeah. we don't have to use beads and beads fish and, and shit like that. We're exactly. Like, I had 20 bucks. Right, and so it's, we come down to, we talk about giving. Like, do you know, like if you are one of those people, I know because I came from this where it's like, man, I don't, I don't have enough money to save. I can't save any, I gotta pay my bills first. If you don't think you are worth enough to pay yourself, even if it's only a dollar, to put in savings, then you will forever, ever be broke. You gotta give to yourself, because or, or give to a, a church, or give to something that you can believe in. Because something 
really interesting happens when you when you give you open yourself up to give more and the more you give the more you give out the more you'll receive it's like a cause and effect thing man. it's so crazy it's like i i there's only one god does not like challenges like i i you know what i mean and we can go religious if you're not religious i don't care uh <laughs> but in the bible in uh, biblical text god only has one challenge he don't like to god doesn't want like you can't be like hey god if you're real make a wall and fall onto this table <laughs> that's not how religion works it it's fa very faith-based faith, yeah. but god gives one challenge in the bible he says i challenge you that if you give me 10 percent mm -hmm. of your first fruit so anytime you make some money give break god off you make a hundred dollars give him 10 bucks to your church and we could even go deeper into that mm -hmm. but if you do that then I will make pretty much your brats, your barns overflow. Mm, overflow. You will not be able to contain all the blessings that I will give you yep. if you give me 10%. Mm -hmm. As someone who gives 10%, I literally have a headache from all of the blessings. I can't even handle it <laughs> physically yeah. anymore because people, I, I literally like, uh, I could pick up my phone and I'm gonna have email after email, mm -hmm. text after text. And once I complete that task, there's money waiting. Mm -hmm. But it, it started from tithing. And it's crazy because when I started tithing, everything became simple. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. I wish I could, yeah. but it, it became like, this whole time I was like, take, 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 mm -hmm. I'm maintaining. Then it was just like give, 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 yeah. which makes no sense. Yeah. If you have a bucket and you just give, you, give. you would think that the bucket yep. would be empty. Yeah. But the bucket you overflows. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so giving was my game changing moment. And then it became very easy because what happened is, and so on a on a physical plane, before I would give the money to my church, I would put it in a jar. I didn't save any money. I didn't do anything i just literally god said give me 10 percent. that was my first homework assignment but i would put it in a mason jar and so i would make 100 bucks i put 10 bucks in there you don't think like it's yeah. a lot but yeah. on by sunday it'd be about two three hundred dollars <laughs> in that bad boy <laughs> and i would go i'd give it to my church i'd right. be at a church i've seen brandon at church yeah. before and i would give it to god and so then i just kept doing that and eventually i was like dang if i just give myself 10 percent, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen gonna so happen. then i started I started giving the church 10% and I started saving 10%. Before I knew it, I had like two or three bands what? saved wow. and I what? gave away, I'm just giving yeah. away bands. And I was like, man, uh -huh. then God kind of put it on my heart. Like he gave me kind of a formula and I just teach the formula, uh, he, you know, save 10, tithe 10, invest 10. I use 20% uh, to pay off my debt and I just really live off the rest. I have right. a rent fund yeah. and then I have like pretty much 30, um, start the camera. Um, I'm gonna use your card for the rest okay. of my stops. Okay. But um pretty much I um I gave, I gave, I would just do that. And fast forward, fast forward, and you talk about mindset, I worked on my mindset a lot, mm -hmm. but fast forward, I'm constantly yeah. hitting, and I'm not saying I'm not rich, I'm not anything. But I'm constantly hitting new heights, new heights because I'm always, anytime I make money, my net worth's going, going up, up, my investments are going up, my, and so I went from, I literally, when I cried at 32, I had $54 to my name. Wow. 54, I remember wow. looking at my bank account, wow. I had $54. Wow. I, at this point, two years later, two and a half years later, I've done a fix and flip. This morning, I bought two Tesla stocks, what? they're 500 bucks each, yeah. and I bought two Apple shares, they're, uh, what? They're uh, 120, they're 130 bucks right now. Uh -huh. So I spent a hundred and a hundred and uh, or, or $1,300 this morning yep. to buy stocks. And that's, and, and last yeah. night I picked up 300 bucks. My boy just uh, did a, he just sent me uh, a gross. I don't know how much I profit. I don't like talking about money. Yeah. Glory be to God. Cause you have good days and bad, bad days. days yeah. But I have way more than $54 and all it started was me just giving. giving. And then I gave to God and then I started giving to myself. Yeah. Yeah. My my uh, mm. credit's higher than it's ever been. Yeah. My investment portfolio's higher than it's ever been. My cash on hand's higher than it's ever been. 
I continue to hit new heights. There's a lot of stuff. I did a lot of, I paid $5,000 for a mindset coach. Okay. So because there's something that, and you might have heard this, Ooh, yeah, there's that, something called um, a thermostat. Mm -hmm. So inside, you know, you, yeah. we have a internal thermostat. And so your thermostat's always gonna say, your car's gonna kinda always look a certain type mm -hmm. of way. Like you will never let it get dirtier than that right. or cleaner, cleaner than, than that. that. You yep. see some people whose shit is always Waste tight. tight. Yep. They're, that's their thermostat. thermostat yeah. You see people who always like, like, you may have a thermostat of say like five thousand dollars in the bank yeah. if you have five g's you're cool you may not go and find right. new deals right you're chilling but chilling. if it drops to three, three. you on that you phone. phone you're like oh shit, i gotta gotta so, make something happen yeah, yeah so for me i pay to have my thermostat so it's always being turned mm -hmm. up so that i'm never comfortable at at 20k or 30k or 50k right it's like how can i get higher right. how can i get higher and still maintain a certain level of integrity well, you know so right. so giving was the first seed and so yeah. after giving all I can really say is it made everything basic like mm -hmm. you take care of other people other people take care, take of, care you. of you and it's in my yeah. life I don't really think I'm not a complex person yeah. Yeah. save 10% invest become, 10% that's, that's giving is huge it's really real really really big in uh, entrepreneurship because you got to be willing to give of yourself and not expect anything in return and when you, I, I feel like when you tithe, like even in the Bible, I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual. Yeah. And um, what you're saying when you tithe is that when I, in, in, my, in my heart, I believe that when I say that I can afford to give money or tithe money, then I'm believing that there is more money on its way. Yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm okay with giving my last, if, it was, if I only had a hundred and I got to give out a hundred dollars, I'm comfortable giving that because what I'm saying subconsciously is that I believe that I'm going to get more. Yeah, that's true. I've never thought but, about it like that. Okay, and then on the flip side, oh man, this is my last hundred dollars. I can't spend this hundred dollars because why? I don't know when the next time I'm gonna get a hundred. Yeah. Subconsciously, that's what you, you're not saying it out loud, but that's subconsciously, that's really what it means in your heart is that you're not believing in, in God to, to, to provide for you. I think that's, I think that's another, we talked about, we talked about, you know, we're, and we're kind of going into like a deeper plane here, and obviously, oh, yeah, this, this is, is a faith. This is a faith-based thing. It is. You know, but it's my truth. I don't, and you know, you can uh -huh. attest to your truth. But it, it's like there's a saying, even you know, in the Bible, it's like we have birds and trees all around us, and it's like God says. Look at the birds, how pretty they are. Look, beautiful feathers. Right we have, they're literally right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful feathers, yeah. beautiful beaks, beautiful eyes, like beautiful. We have beautiful trees shading us yeah. right now on this hot day. It's a cool breeze coming in. And God says, if I'm gonna take care of these birds, I'm gonna take care of these trees. They don't labor and you're much more, you're greater than them. What yeah. makes you think I'm not gonna take, take care, care of you? Yeah. And so it's like, like principles like that are what kind of keep me going. Even sometimes I'll freak out like, oh, I didn't get this deal. Oh, I didn't get yeah. that deal. Yeah. But what helps me out is like, like, was I eating before that deal? Yes. I've, I've been, yeah. at, you know, from the time I was born to this very moment, I've had food on my table. Yeah. And it's like, this deal ain't gonna make or break whether I have food on my table. God is my provider. Your provider. You know what I mean? And yeah. so you, come, I come from, I'm a very faith-based hustler. Yeah. But at the same time, I'll still put the work in. Yeah. I'm still gonna make the phone calls. I'm still gonna do what it takes to become successful. The only difference is, is I'm operating. This is what, uh, you know, we talk about the shift and the change. Uh -huh. The change, this is what giving does. Giving takes you, so when you're in, when you don't give, and you talked about that hundred, you're in a scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset, yeah. That means there's not enough for me and there's not enough for my family. Mm -hmm. When you start giving, you're in an, it puts you in an abundance mindset right. to where you see the abundance, to where I said I literally like have a headache because there's so much abundance. Yeah. That it's to the point where me and you, I, I, my mind is crazy. Like me and him could do a sales course. I could go back to San Jose, find an influencer, drop some shirts. Yeah. I could sell stickers. Like, yeah. like with, and that's even if I started right now, that's, that's not going into my email. That's right. not going back. So once you start giving, the mm -hmm. world will give you a plethora of ideas to make money oh, and it will man. open up a book mm -hmm. that you would, you can't even close. You can't man. And uh, uh, advice for any entrepreneur, start by giving your service away for free. Woo! You gotta give your you gotta give your service away for free. Hit. Um, not even if even especially if you're brand new because you're just getting started. You, you should always I mean? do it. I would always do it. 
I say you should do at least at for the entirety yeah. of your career, you should give your services 10% away for free. for free. There should be orders and jobs and things that you do at your discretion that you give away for free. I see cats who have a business that they want to get off the ground yeah. and I'm they're like, how do I do it? Like, like I can't tell you how many free videos I've done. I can't tell yeah. you how many like I'm I we're not I'm not yeah. paying him for this podcast, right. but if I was making money I would. But I And I wouldn't even charge. I'm like, man, you know, I feel like this is the value that's created here is like mutually beneficial. Yeah. I feel like I'm like, wow. But you know, but the thing is, is <laughs> yeah. everything I do is like, I promise you I could be doing do something, something for money right now. Yeah. Um, but do your services for free. free. Give out if you sell ice cream. Give on a Sunday, go give some ice cream to the kids or go down to the homeless shelter and give out some ice cream. And then that's how you build connections. Connection, and it yeah. doesn't necessarily always have to be about money, but you, this is what really do be happening. Like for me, I'll tell you my video, like I have a screen print business, I have a video business. I do, um, I have a buddy, uh, his name's Bobby. He does photography. Okay. He's like, he's like, I like your videos. He's like, can you do some behind the scenes stuff? I'm like, I'm not gonna charge you. Um, if you start making money or something, you could throw me a couple bucks, but yeah. I, I'm not tripping. Yeah. So I did, you know, I've done three videos. I've met a bunch of new people through this connection. I've gotten okay. better at doing video right. work. And then it's like, now I'm doing these free videos, but then someone will say, hey, can you do this for me? How much your rate? Mm -hmm. I'll charge them, right. but they've seen my work. Same. And because yeah. I've done so many videos for free, yeah. boom, 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 I bang it out. Bang it out and I have a, a, a viable product. It's not like, yeah. oh, let me figure this out. Figure this out and yeah. then now, and it's even better because they paid for it. Mm -hmm. And then now my buddy Bobby, we just did a job and he's getting, he got paid for the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of dollars. So yeah. for me, that means God got paid. Right. I made, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I bought stocks yeah. with it or I put money in my brokerage account yeah. and I was able to save some money yeah. but it I literally took free and turned it into assets and right. savings and, and tithing and everything so man. that's Just how giving. yeah but you man that's that's it's, key advice that, that is a straight-up abundance mentality yeah not even think about the money man check this out man even people that uh, I, I don't never like to talk about people that work a job and you know are, are check to check yeah but I, I do do want to encourage people that are stuck or feel like they're stuck in that check to check thing like and i want to challenge you and ask you this question like why are you still at that that job is it for the check you feel me because i feel like i remember when i was working check to check the only reason i had the job was because i knew i had a paycheck coming in two weeks yeah now going into be an entrepreneur it flips the script because you got to work without any expectation of the pay right to get to to to, to get that that money yeah. or that or that client and so it puts you in a, a constant like you say giving like i'm just giving 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 a lot of the information that i give actually not a lot all the information i give out is free and i encourage people to always go do their own research go google because i only do that what works for me yeah you know what i mean and i'm like very transparent like look this was worked for me this is what i do these are my goals you should have your own set of goals and your own set of values that you want to operate by to become financially free because there's more than one more than one way to skin a cat so for sure they say right yeah <laughs> so does the, the, uh, the skin a cat caucasians man. say that uh -huh. um <laughs> uh just playing all love to, all love to my white counterparts i love you guys honestly yeah um but yeah man um i uh yeah i agree i think you know we can kind of kind of do some some closing thoughts so yeah mm -hmm. You know, we just kind of wanted to talk about kind of what the shift was, and it sounded like really um, learning about mindset, personal development. He gave some good names, Zig Ziglar, Eric Thomas. So one of the things, so there's a difference between the 1% and the 99%, what you talked about. 1% they're always learning. They're always putting new stuff into their brain. Mm -hmm. They come, the 99%, the they, they're stuck in a unsuccessful routine. Mm -hmm. Meaning the 99% of people go to work, they get off of work, they crack open a beer, they watch Netflix, they eat a little dinner, they hang out with their family for a little bit, then they go to sleep, they wake up, go back to work and repeat for the next 40 years. Yeah. Go on a vacation here and there. The 1% will, these are the people who Maybe I have a job, they go to work, but on the way to work, they're listening to some kind of business training or sales training or communication training. So now they're more advanced that day. Once right. they go to work, they do their job, they get their check. And then when they get off of work, 
they spend a little bit of time developing their own business or their own skill set. Yep. And then, so now it doesn't seem like a lot after a day, but after two, three years of doing this, they've developed a business. Mm -hmm. They may have now created or bought an asset. Their mindset is much more advanced because every single day they're developing their mind. And so if you take person A, who's a 99% or just stuck in that same routine and person B, who's, you know, just like he said, driving to work, listening to the, the um, the Earl Nightingales and the Zig Ziglar's and uh, what's the black dude's name? You, not Eric Thomas. Uh, you talking about uh, Les Brown? Yeah, listening to the Les Browns. Les Brown. um, you're gonna see a difference in mm -hmm. these people's lives after two, three years yep. because of now they've breaking off because they're still getting their check from their job, mm -hmm. but now they have businesses and multiple yep. streams of income. Mm -hmm. So really, this whole talk was how do you go from being a 99 percenter? to a one percenter and we've yeah. talked about a lot of the principles communication yeah. tithing giving mm -hmm. giving your services reading learning by doing these things yeah. you're gonna put yourself in a higher tax bracket you're gonna start networking with like-minded individuals right. and it's gonna change your life and the your family's life for the better so I don't know if you want to add to that yeah man all that you, man, you took the words right out of my mouth that was uh yeah I couldn't have said anything better myself man just um, Continuing to always develop, um, always ask yourself questions, um, always know where you want to be. You know, next year, two years from now, ten years from now, have a have a have a purpose, man. And goals. Act, that's the the number one thing, man. Like having an actual purpose, uh, visualizing yourself. Like I got, I I have a what three kids now, or yeah. I ain't made an announcement yet. Yeah. But, <laughs> this is the announcement. Congratulations, you know, right? Congratulations but, uh, on that. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. But something interesting does happen when you you have children. I never thought about this before, uh, but I I literally uh, picture myself being an old man. Now I picture myself being 80 years old, having grandkids, great grandkids, and um, I picture my life and what I want it to be like 50 years from now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I never ever thought that way before until I got into personal development and I had a now I have a purpose which I feel like my pur my purpose is to educate entertain and inspire people to be more do more and have more uh, not just financially but you know spiritually physically and that's what my life is about man helping people uh, overcome barrier overcoming their fear um, the fear fear of rejection fear of criticism fear of poverty because they all just come down fear once you conquer those fears then you you, you become free yeah you know what i mean and um this has been really good man i appreciate the, the the invitation for sure and i'm looking forward to doing this again yeah we will so i just bought a brand new laptop so we're gonna do if you're listening to this i'm gonna still put it up on itunes uh -huh. but if if the sound is quality is a little bit off it's because uh we're shooting it a different way i normally use um garage band and i can mess with the sound but this was huge it was a great conversation if you if you're listening to this point you got some real game um if you listen to anybody successful there's a lot of seeds and principles that you'll constantly hear mm -hmm. um but how can people find you yeah so you can find me on instagram at all heroes don't wear capes i'm really big on instagram uh, you can also find me on Facebook. I do a lot of my content is on Facebook and I do Facebook lives like daily. Uh, I'm gonna transition and start doing it more and more on Instagram uh, just so that people can just learn some basic uh, core financial principles um, uh, that, that not only like can help them today but really for the long term because I, I focus 20 years from now, 30 years from now. That's that's where my, my gaze is at. For sure. And. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice to have things like right now, like immediately, yeah. uh, but we got to understand that most things that are going to be really, really beneficial for you are going to be uh, a long term. Yeah. Right? Wealth is built uh, slowly over slowly. time. Yep. Um, you know what I mean? You could get big chunks and hunks there, but you still have to learn. Even when you first start planting trees, like you'll be so tempted to tear it up. So you have to plant another one. Um, but yeah, this is huge. So my name is JD. Uh, part of the culture dot art. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at part of the culture. Uh, again, part of the culture dot art. I have uh, some courses on stuff on stocks and mm -hmm. just go check it out. Um, if you are listening to this, you can always reach out. I have some free books and stuff I can give to you that I've written. Uh, some ebooks. I'll shoot them to you for free. Uh, just shoot me a, a DM or something um, and look up for the next episode. I appreciate you. Thank you, Brandon, oh, yeah, for man. being on here. Anytime, man. Have Thanks for one, having man. me. Appreciate it. Yeet.